So you want to be a DevOps engineer by 2026? Perfect, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to cut through all that noise and confusion. I'm going to give you a clear, focused roadmap, the absolute essential tools you need to know to succeed. Feeling a little overwhelmed? Yeah. If you're just starting your DevOps journey, this probably looks familiar. It's just a sea of logos, a total whirlwind of names. And honestly, it's a super common feeling for anyone new trying to figure out where to even begin. And that's the thing, right? For every single piece of the puzzle, CI, CD, observability, you name it, there are like a dozen different tools all shouting that they're the best solution. It's no wonder it feels so overwhelming when you're trying to get your foot in the door. But here's the secret. You absolutely do not need to learn all of them, not even close. You just need to master a handful of the right ones. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. I'm giving you that curated essential list for 2026. Okay, let's kick things off with part one, your foundational toolkit. Think of this as the bedrock. Before we get into the cool stuff like building and automating, we have to nail the absolute essentials that everything else depends on. First things first, Linux, you gotta know it. Something like Ubuntu is a great place to start because I mean, it powers something like 90% of production servers out there. Next up, version control. Look, Git is the tech, but GitHub is the place. It's where all the collaboration happens. It's the undisputed industry standard. And finally, you need some scripting skills. Start with Bash or Shell scripting. It's the bread and butter for basic automation and little system tasks you'll be doing all day, every day. All right, foundation set. Now we can move on to the really cool part, a core concept in DevOps, building your infrastructure. We're talking about managing everything as code, not clicking around in some manual web console. That's old school. And this is where the magic of infrastructure as code, or IAC, comes into play. Instead of, you know, manually setting up servers one by one, you write code that defines everything, your servers, your networks, your databases, the whole shebang. And when you talk about IAC, there's one name that stands above the rest, Terraform. It's the king. Now, are there other tools? For sure. You're gonna hear names like Pulumi and Crossplane, and they're great. But let's be real. When we're talking about getting a job in 2026, Terraform is the one to learn first. Its ecosystem is just massive and so mature, making it the most in-demand skill in this space, hands down. And yeah, there's been some talk about licensing changes and all that, but honestly, the sheer momentum and the huge community that Terraform has built, it just makes it the obvious choice. So my advice, master Terraform first. Then once you've got it down, go ahead and explore the other tools, but start here. Okay, so your servers are up and running thanks to Terraform. Now what? Well, you need to configure them, right? Install software, set up users. That's where configuration management comes in. Now, you might hear about older tools like Puppet or Chef, but for 2026, the tool you want to focus on is Ansible. It's just so much easier to get started with, it's agentless, and uses simple YAML, which is a huge plus. Okay, now we're getting to the really fun stuff. This is the heart and soul of modern DevOps. We're talking containers, orchestration, and the CI CD pipelines that tie it all together. Automating everything from the moment a developer writes code to the second it's live in production. Let's start with containers. They're basically the building blocks for modern apps. And your go-to tool here, no question, is Docker. It has the biggest community, the most support, it's just the industry leader. Podman is a really strong contender and it's gaining a lot of ground, but for now, focus on Docker first. So you've got your containers. What happens when you have hundreds or even thousands of them? You need a way to manage them all at scale. That's orchestration. And listen, there is one tool here you absolutely, positively must learn, and that is Kubernetes. Seriously, by 2026, this isn't even just a DevOps skill anymore. It's a fundamental tech skill. It's how you get crazy scalability and make your applications super resilient. But here's a key thing to remember. Kubernetes moves fast. It's always evolving. So you can't just learn the basics from five years ago. For 2026, you need to focus on the modern stuff. In networking, that means looking at the new gateway API instead of just the older ingress. You also have to know how to run AI and ML models on Cades because that's becoming huge. And finally, get really comfortable with custom resources, CRDs. They're what let you extend Kubernetes to manage pretty much anything. Now, when it comes to managing your applications on Kubernetes, it's not an either or situation. You need to learn two tools, Helm and Customize. 
Think of Helm as a package manager for Kubernetes. It helps you install and manage complex apps. Customize is a bit different. It helps you tweak and customize your configurations for different environments without a bunch of messy templates. They might look similar at first glance, but they solve slightly different problems, and a real pro knows how to use both. Okay, CI, CD. This space is crowded. It can be super confusing. So let's just cut through all of that noise. Here's your winning combo for 2026. For CI or continuous integration, learn GitHub Actions. For CD, continuous delivery, learn Argo CD. That's it. Focus on this stack. If you master this combination, you're going to be in a really, really good sp All right, so let's recap. We've built our infrastructure with code. We've automated our pipelines. What's left? Well, it's time for the final crucial piece of the puzzle, actually running all this stuff in the cloud and, you know, making sure it's working properly. And that's where observability comes in. It's all about understanding what's happening inside your systems. It really breaks down into three main pillars. For monitoring, you're going to want to learn Prometheus and Grafana. For logging, the go-to is the ELK stack. And for tracing, it's Jaeger and OpenTelemetry. The great thing is, these are all powerful open source tools. And if you learn them, you'll understand the fundamentals behind the big enterprise tools like Datadog, so you'll be set no matter where you go. And of course, all of this is happening on a cloud platform. Now here's some really important advice. Focus. Do not try to learn AWS, Azure, and GCP all at the same time. You'll just spread yourself too thin. Pick one, just one, and go deep. Get certified in it, build real projects on it, and become a genuine expert in that single cloud first. I know, learning a whole cloud platform can feel like trying to drink from a fire hose. So let's make it manageable. Follow these steps. Step one, start with the absolute foundation services. Compute, networking, storage, and IAM. Get those down cold. Step two, move on to the core DevOps services. Things like their container services, databases, and monitoring tools. Then, and only then, once you've got that solid base, can you start diving into the advanced stuff like serverless, automation, and scalability. Whew, we have covered a lot of ground. So let's pull it all back together now. Here is your single focused learning path that's gonna guide you straight into 2026. This right here, this is your roadmap. We started with the basics, Linux, GitHub, and Bash. Then we built our infrastructure with Terraform and Ansible. After that, we dove into the modern workflow with Docker and Kubernetes, using Helm and Customize to manage it all. We automated the whole thing with our power combo of GitHub Actions and Argo CD. And finally, we learned how to keep an eye on it all with Prometheus, ELK, and Jagger, all running on your chosen cloud provider. That's it. This is your toolkit for becoming a top-tier DevOps engineer in 2026. So there you have it. You've got the roadmap. You've got the list of tools. The only question left is, what are you going to build? Now get out there and start making something awesome. Trying to break into DevOps, you've probably felt it. You hit this wall of just hundreds of tools, and they all have their own crazy learning curve. It's totally overwhelming. But what if I told you that you only need to master a handful to actually get hired? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're building the Toolbox, a curated list that will put you on the fast track for 2026. I mean, this slide probably feels incredibly familiar to a lot of you. The DevOps landscape isn't just a landscape, it's a maze. For every single concept, whether it's CI, CD, or infrastructure as code, there are at least four, maybe five different tools, all screaming that they solve the same problem. It's just a classic case of choice paralysis. So how in the world do you choose the right path? Which tools are actually going to land you a job in 2026? That is the question we are going to answer right now. We're going to lay out a clear, focused roadmap based on what the market is actually demanding and, more importantly, where the whole industry is heading. So here's how we'll do it. We'll start by talking about the tool maze itself, and then we'll build our foundation with those core skills you just have to have. From there, we'll get into automating infrastructure, dive deep into containers, build a really modern CI-CD pipeline, and then we'll wrap it all up with observability and the cloud. Let's get into it. Okay, let's just break down this chaos for a second. The sheer number of tools is, without a doubt, the biggest hurdle for anyone aspiring to be a DevOps engineer. But here's the secret, the thing that nobody really tells you, you do not need to learn them all. You just need to learn the right ones. And this is really the core idea for our entire discussion today. You don't need to know every single tool in the landscape. You just need to get really, really good at a handful of the right ones. That focus is what's going to make you effective and, let's be honest, hireable. Every great structure has to start with a solid foundation. 
right? Well, in DevOps, that means mastering a few core skills before you even think about moving on to the more advanced, shiny tools. These are the absolute building blocks for everything that comes next. So what's in this foundational toolkit? First, Linux. I mean, come on, it powers something like 90% of all production workloads, so it's a must know. Focus on Ubuntu to start. Next, version control. That means Git, and the platform is gonna be GitHub. And finally, you've gotta know scripting with Bash or Shell. These three are your absolute non-negotiables. All right, now that we have our foundation poured, let's start building on top of it with Infrastructure as Code, or IAC. This is where you learn to manage all of your servers and networks with code, which is a core DevOps practice that will save you an unbelievable amount of time and effort. When it comes to ISC, the recommendation is crystal clear. Go with Terraform. Now, look, I know there's been some chatter about its open source license, but for you as an end user learning and working, it's still free to use. And more importantly, the ecosystem that Terraform has built is so massive that replacing it just isn't easy. Short sure, tools like Pulumi and Crossplane are cool, but you master Terraform first, it's going to open up the most doors for you, period. Next up is configuration management. This is all about how you manage the state of, say, 100 different servers all at once. And here, the choice is Ansible. It's agentless, which means it's just way easier to set up and manage than the older tools like Puppet and Chef. It's the clear winner for 2026. Okay, now let's talk about the biggest game changer in modern DevOps, and that's containers. This is how modern applications are built, how they're shipped, and how they run. This is a topic you absolutely have to master. No way around it. And right at the heart of this container revolution is one tool, Kubernetes. It is the undisputed de facto standard for container orchestration. Not learning it in 2026 is a non-starter. You will be left behind. And don't just learn the basics either. Really dig into the newer concepts like the Gateway API, which is the new, much more powerful way to manage traffic coming into your cluster. So the complete container stack really looks like this. For containerization itself, you're gonna go with Docker. It's still the most adopted runtime out there. Kubernetes, like we just said, is your orchestration engine. And now what's really interesting and a key takeaway here is package management. You need to learn both Helm and Customize. They look similar, but they serve slightly different purposes. And trust me, you are going to see both of them used out in the wild. Okay, so we have our applications all packaged up nicely in containers. How do we automate getting them out to the world? Well, this brings us to the CI CD pipeline. And yes, it is another crowded space with a ton of options. But we're gonna cut right through that noise and focus on a really simple, really powerful stack. So here's the strategy. Master one excellent tool for CI and one for CD. For continuous integration, the choice is GitHub Actions. For continuous delivery, it's Argo CD. Now, why this focus? Because in an interview, they're looking for a well-rounded DevOps engineer, not someone who only knows CI CD. Having deep expertise in this stack is way more impressive than having shallow knowledge of five different syntaxes that you might mess up under pressure. All right, we've built our app, we've packaged it, we've delivered it. Now we have to make sure it's actually running smoothly out there in the cloud. And that's where observability comes in. Observability is really built on three pillars. For monitoring, you're gonna learn the combination of Prometheus and Grafana. For logging, you need to master the ELK or EFK stack. And for tracing, you'll focus on Yager and OpenTelemetry. Now, the crucial point here is that if you know these open source fundamentals, you can easily adapt to any big enterprise tool like Datadog or New Relic, because they all work on the exact same principles. And finally, the cloud. Pick one of the big three, AWS, Azure, or GCP, and learn it systematically. Don't try to learn everything all at once. You'll go crazy. Break it down. Start with the foundational services, you know, compute, networking, then move on to the application services, like databases and containers. And only then should you start tackling the advanced stuff, like serverless and automation. So to make that a little more concrete, here's what that approach looks like if you picked AWS. You start with the absolute basics, EC2 for compute, VPC for networking, S3 for storage. Then you build on top of that with services like EKS for containers and Lambda for serverless. This layered approach turns a massive, intimidating topic into a totally manageable learning path. So 
Let's put it all together. This is it. This is your cheat sheet for 2026 for your foundation, Linux, GitHub, and Bash. For infrastructure, Terraform and Ansible. For containers, the full suite, Docker, Kubernetes, Helm, and Customize. For CI CD, GitHub Actions, and Argo CD. For observability, that core open source stack. And for the cloud, you pick one major platform. This is your focus toolkit. This is the roadmap. You now have a clear path that cuts straight through all the noise of the DevOps landscape. It's focused on the handful of tools that truly matter for 2026. So the only question left is, what's your first...